hello everybody welcome back to my channel and i am going to talk about confounding bias today so confounding bias is one of the uh, biases that uh, confuse us when we're doing research studies and this is one of the things that everybody wants to be careful about now um, i have taken two examples to explain about confounding bias uh, and I, the definition of confounding bias is something that is related to both the exposure and the outcome but it is not a part of the disease mechanism it is very important to remember that it is not a part of the disease mechanism i will give you an example later on but let's first focus on its relationship to exposure and outcome and how it confuses um uh, these associations. So the first example that I have taken up is the one between um, uh, birth order and uh, Down syndrome. So it might uh, look like birth order and Down syndrome have a, a, an association like higher the birth order, more the incidence of Down syndrome um, in those patients. Now, if you include maternal age, um, you will see that actually uh, the birth order and maternal age are related in the sense that um, uh, it's 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 Down syndrome is more related to maternal age than it is to birth order because um, like as the birth order increases, maternal age also increases. But here's the thing: some kids may have a lower birth order and still the uh, maternal age is high like the mother has gotten pregnant at a at a um, at a higher age has higher numerical age but the birth order is still small so this is the confounding factor for this um for this example so as soon as you include maternal age as uh, as one of the criteria you will see that the association between birth order and down syndrome disappears um, that is what a confounding bias is so once you inc include the confounding factor the inclusion of the confounding factor makes the false association disappear now for example if we consider uh, our next example which is uh, physical activity and age so it might look as though physical activity, uh, higher the physical activity, like lower is the uh, incidence of MI in such people. But what you find out that, um, in, like, you know, people with high physical activity also tend to be young. So it is actually the young age that is decreasing the incidence of MI in such patients. And these two are related, like lower the age, uh, sorry, higher the physical activity, like low the age, higher the physical activity. And then these patients tend to have a decreased incidence of MI. So when you, when you introduce this, the association between um, this and this is gone. So that is what a confounding bias is. So um, it was confusing the results and when you uh, when you include it as a part of your criteria you will realize that there is no real association between these two now we also don't want to um, confuse it with the mechanism for example someone who is having high physical activity also tends to have a lower blood pressure and that decreases their incidence of mi so this is a mechanism it's a part of the mechanism so this won't be so blood pressure in that case will not be a confounding uh, factor so but when it comes to age and age tends to be a very common confounding factor uh, and uh, to uh, to offset these confounding biases uh, people tend to do what we call case control studies in which you have race and age matched controls so that you can offset the effects of a, a confounding bias and also there is uh, random assignments in which um, it's blinded in the sense that uh, um, the patient doesn't know like when you're doing like drug tests for example the patient doesn't know whether you're uh, giving them a placebo or whether you're giving them the actual drug so random assignment 
and case control uh, studies these are the two ways to correct for con confounding bias uh, thank you so much for listening i try to keep all of my videos uh, five minutes or like I try to aim for like five minutes or less because um, about the I mean I just know that uh, humans tend to don't uh, tend not to have such a high attention span and I don't like to go on and on but if you want me to make like longer and more detailed videos please let me know in the comments and um, if you uh, if you like my videos please give it a thumbs up and uh, do like and subscribe to my channel and um, and uh, if you have any particular uh, topics that you would like me to uh, uh, make videos on and uh, explain to you, please let me know in the comment section below so that I can um, uh, make those videos and help you people out. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and see you again next time. Have a good day.